I'm getting a chance to try out a Coke Forge, which is something that I have never used much, and get a sense for how to manage that fire. Um, these forges have three zones. Um, the zone closest to the air is an oxidizing zone, where the metal will rust faster. The middle zone is a neutral zone, where nothing much happens. And then the zone above that is a carburizing layer, where um, a little bit of carbon and a lot of impurities are going to get added into your material. So if you sit even with this rim and kind of just shove it straight in, that usually hits you in the neutral spot. Now, the interesting thing about these forges, in particular about coke, is that it's actually really easy to burn your metal and to get it hot enough that you can actually physically burn iron. So let's give it a try. Yeah, that's just a nice high orange. Let's go ahead and try it again and see if we can't get it to burn. Oh, yep, see those sparks? Those sparks that look like a sparkler? That's an indicator, yep, that's burning. Wow. Look at that knobbly appearance. It's starting to burn. That is amazingly cool. It's one of the challenges of melting iron in the first place is that uh, it's it reacts well with oxygen. It rusts at, at, at high speed. That's basically what burning is, is just rusting at high speed. And so when you are running a, a foundry and trying to melt iron, you have to... I mean, that is a, that is a challenge. Historically, we only got to casting iron fairly recently. It's not a technology that was very common in history. Even when you make iron smelting, there's no actual melting involved in smelting. And even when you are smelting, you want a fair amount of impurities in the material to act as a slag, which will coat your iron particles with glass and keep them from burning as they get closer to the uh, gas intake of, uh, of your bloomery furnace. But yeah. Those parts.